the great miracle worker. The Bible says, Behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, <coughs> oh, Lord, if thou wilt, thou, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. The Lord had compassion on the hungry multitude following him. And through his miracle power, he fed 5,000 men and their families with just two fishes and five loaves of bread. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed their sick. One night, Jesus surprised his disciples by walking on the water. He said to them, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. All creation obeyed the Son of God. Jesus declared, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. In demonstration of his power, he came to the grave of Lazarus, who had been dead four days. And Jesus cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And the news spread everywhere that Jesus could even raise the dead. When the even was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick. The common people admired Jesus. His biggest opposition came from religious leaders. They accused him, saying his power came from Satan. But Jesus said to them, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Behind the scenes, Satan was deeply involved. But you must realize that before the devil moves against someone, he must first get permission from God the Father in heaven. And so, to fulfill Bible prophecy, God allowed Satan to attack the Lord Jesus. Later, the Lord's religious enemies tried to trap him by asking, Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image? And superscription. They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things which that are God's. When they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. Jesus exposed the Pharisees when he said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, 
How can ye escape the damnation of hell? Jesus said, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Jesus said to the crowds, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The Lord Jesus sent shockwaves throughout the religious establishment when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, thereby declaring to the whole world that he is the only way to heaven. Those words turned the religious world upside down. They hated Jesus for saying them then. And multitudes hate those words today. The Messiah's ministry was coming to a close. The prophet Daniel foretold to the exact day when the Messiah would enter Jerusalem to the shouts of Hosanna. But Jesus knew that within a week, they would be shouting, Crucify him! Satan was busy moving the religious leaders to plot the death of his greatest enemy. After all, it was Jesus Christ who had thrown him and his angels out of heaven. The disciples were still excited about Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, believing that he would soon be a king. But at the Passover supper, Jesus explained that he was about to shed his blood and die. Jesus took some bread and wine as a symbol of what was about to take place. He broke some bread, which represented his body that would be broken on the cross. Then he gave them wine, which represented the blood he would shed. This established a custom to be followed until his second coming. After the supper, Satan made his move. He used a disciple named Judas Iscariot by entering into his body. What followed made Judas the greatest traitor of all history. Judas went to the chief priests to betray the Lord. Judas sold out to the religious crowd for 30 pieces of silver. Then Satan, believing his hour of triumph had come, summoned his dark forces to Jerusalem to destroy Jesus, the light of the world. That night, Jesus took his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane and left them so he could pray alone. The Bible says, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. Jesus, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, was about to take upon himself the sins of the whole world. Jesus prayed, saying, 